three main areas can make securing your organization seem impossible. Users are the first major challenge. Very few of your users are security experts, and no matter how effective your training programs are, they will make human errors that compromise security. It only takes one user to click the wrong link or open a phishing email, and the doors are open to hackers. The IT environment makes security even more complex. Users need varying levels of access, but the environment rarely allows for that granular control, nor is the environment static. Users introduce uncontrolled software, patching is an ongoing task, and rollouts take time. All of these create opportunities for attackers. When it comes to threats, attackers are more agile, more creative, and often better funded than any security department will ever be. The number of threat actors is growing, and the threats they're posing are becoming more and more highly targeted. So much so that 70 to 90% of malware is unique to an organization and unknown to antivirus vendors. Fortunately, there's a straightforward solution to most of these security challenges. Simply remove admin rights. Study after study shows that implementing least privilege by removing local admin rights is a key way to eliminate critical vulnerabilities and stop threats before they start. There's only one problem. How do you take away admin rights without seriously hindering user productivity or overwhelming the service desk with tickets related to user privileges? With Beyond Trust, you have a better option. Beyond Trust Privilege Management for Windows and Mac allows you to take control of your endpoints and secure your environment by managing user privileges and protecting trusted applications, all while reducing service desk calls and improving user productivity. Now we're going to show you a demo of Privilege Management for Windows and Mac. We're going to start by looking at our Windows solution, where we'll show you our high and low flexibility quick start policies, as well as how Privilege Management handles application control and trusted application protection. Then we'll take a look at our Mac OS solution, where we'll show you how quick start policies and application control work for Mac OS specific use cases. First of all, let's take a look at the challenges that privilege management for Windows and Mac solves. In order to achieve least privilege, you need to remove standing admin rights from your end users. However, when you remove standing admin rights, you often solve a security problem, but you create a productivity problem. And that productivity problem can result in users not being able to install or run applications that they normally would be able to, or make system preference updates that they could previously make easily. Anything that requires admin privileges will prompt a user account control pop-up within the operating system. So if you remove those privileges from users without another solution, it becomes a really frustrating user experience. You are hindering productivity and stopping your users from functioning. And this can place a massive strain on the help desk. We often see help desk tickets rise when this is the case within an organization. However, even after removing admin privileges, there are still areas of the operating system that are accessible by the end user that can compromise security. They can still run their own applications from the user profile, and they can still run potentially harmful scripts against the operating system that could do damage. And if end users can do it, that means attackers can do it as well. So if an attacker is able to deliver an accessible point to an end user and get a hold of a remote shell, then that shell could typically still run in the context of the user using built-in Windows applications and open up massive vulnerabilities. This is very difficult to detect. So removing admin privileges from end users is a great step in the right direction, but doing so without another solution in place hinders your user's productivity and still leaves your estate vulnerable to attacks. Now I'd like to introduce Beyond Trust Privilege Management for Windows and Mac. I'm going to show you how privilege management can help you take control of your endpoints and solve the problems we've talked about today. We're going to start in the Web Policy Editor, where I've created a set of policies using Quick Start. Quick Start policies condense all of Beyond Trust's experience and privilege management down into set, high, medium, and low flexibility work styles. These policies can be easily and quickly deployed to different teams in your organization depending on the tasks they need to be able to complete, allowing you to remove app and writes fast while still maintaining a positive user experience. Quick Start policies can be used on Windows and Mac OS endpoints. If we focus on Windows for now, we have an all users policy that I'm going to enable. The all users policy will apply to everyone in the organization, irrespective of the job function or role. I'm also going to turn on the high flexibility work style. The high flexibility work style is perfect for high technical knowledge teams like developers that require more flexibility in their day-to-day -day roles. 
The high flexibility work style is filtered out to a set of users, in this case to all users that are not part of the admin group. We could also add Azure Active Directory groups here as well. I'm going to save and unlock this, and I'm going to apply it to our user group. Now we're going to come back to our endpoint and run through some tests with this user using the high flexibility work style. First, let's take a look at the group membership. You can see here that this user is still considered a standard user. So with privilege management introduced, you're not changing the context of the user and their group membership. Privilege management functions at the application process level. When an application is defined in the policy that requires admin privileges to run, it will just simply run for the end user. A good example of that will be this Canon printer installation. I've added this application to the allow list within our policy by defining that any drivers from Canon are allowed to be run by our users, so the user is able to install it seamlessly. But what about an application that has not been added to the allow list? Exception handling is a crucial part of privilege management. Because this user is currently set to the high flexibility work style, they are able to make their own decisions. So if this user wants to run an application that has not been added to the allow list within the policy, privilege management will allow them to do that. Instead of requiring them to enter admin credentials, they will see a friendly, customizable message that they can interact with. In this example, because this is a signed application from Microsoft, the user is able to simply install it by clicking yes in the dialog box that pops up. If the user tries to install an application that isn't signed, again, because they are in the high flexibility work style, they'll be prompted with a dialog box that asks them to select the reason they need to install the application. And once they've done that, the application will go ahead and install. We can also challenge the user to re-authenticate if they're running high-risk applications like PowerShell. This user is re-authenticating as a standard user. In most organizations, PowerShell would not be available to standard users. But since this hypothetical user is a developer and is under the high flexibility work style, we're giving them the ability to make their own decisions because of their technical knowledge. So they can enter their credentials and run the application elevated, and we will have a full audit trail of their actions. Even though this user is a developer, we can still impose restrictions on them. So for example, if you wanted to block uTorrent or WhatsApp or other specific applications within your organization, that can easily be done through the block list functionality in the policy. Now we're going to go back to the web policy editor and apply a different quick start policy to show you a different experience. We previously had the high flexibility work style applied, which is great for developers, DevOps, QA, or other technically savvy users. Now we're going to apply the low flexibility work style, which is a good fit for non-technical users like sales or marketing teams. We're going to disable the high flexibility work style here in the web policy editor and enable the low flexibility work style. We're going to save and unlock, and we're going to apply it to our user group. And now we'll head back to our endpoint. The goal of the low flexibility work style is to keep the user safe when they're functioning on their endpoint. So this user could still run the Canon printer application that was added to the allow list in our policy with no problems. They can still also do basic household tasks such as look at their network properties. But if the user tries to install an application, let's take Wireshark as an example, they'll be met with a dialog box asking them to provide a reason for installation. We've set up our ServiceNow integration for ITSM, so when the user clicks Request, a new ticket will be created for them in ServiceNow. An incident number is provided to the user, in this case, 10808. And if I take a look at our ServiceNow instance, you can see the new incident populating under 10808. And if we look deeper into this ticket, we can see all of the application details from the user. This includes the desktop they're running on, the reason for needing to run the application, the application sign-in information, the SHA-1 hash information, but most importantly, I can approve this request for that user right now. 
I can approve this application for just one-off use, and that will get sent down to the local policy on that endpoint for that specific user for that application. So we're not approving it for everybody, we're just approving it for this one user. And if I come back to my endpoint and try to run Wireshark again, we'll see that the message has changed to show that the request has been approved and we can go ahead and run the application. So we have the ability to facilitate a positive end user experience. Users will not be hitting roadblocks to productivity with privilege management deployed. The other key part of this process is the ability to monitor and track our users' actions easily through the web policy editor. We have the ability to see what our user experience is across the user base. Do we have users logged in with admin privileges? Where are those admin privileges? This reporting is a great way to show the reduction in standing admin privileges as you implement the privilege management solution. We can also look at the applications that our users are running. If we head into the user profiles section, we can see the applications that our users are running and filter out any applications that we want to block. We can also add applications directly to the allow list within our policies from here as well. So if you see a trend that an application has been requested several times across your user base, you can go ahead and get the application details from here and you can add it directly to the allow list in your policy. I'll select my demo policy and I'll choose add admin and then we'll add and close. One of the other elements that we have within the product is the ability to block applications based on where they originated from. So if you remember as a user previously, I ran this PayScales Excel document and it called off to a command prompt. This means that Excel is calling into a command prompt that might bring down a payload from an external site, as an example, creating a vulnerability. We have the ability to block that type of behavior within privilege management as well. So if I come back to my policy set in the web policy editor, and go to the policy that we've been working with so far, what I'm going to do is bring in added functionality by enabling trusted application protection. Trusted application protection is there to protect content handlers such as browsers, Microsoft Office Suite, Adobe Reader, anything that's handling content from the internet. It adds a layer of protection based on the application relationship, not based on reputation. If we head back to our endpoint now and try to run that Excel document again, you'll see that the command prompt is blocked because it was running from the Excel document. Whereas if that were initiated by the user, it would go ahead and run as normal. So now that we've gone through our Windows demonstration, we'll go ahead and take a look at this same functionality in Mac OS. Privilege management for Mac delivers the same experience as we've just delivered on Windows, allowing you to take control of your endpoints and provide your users with the same experience across operating systems. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Mac OS policies within the web policy editor. It's a similar type of setup where we have our all users policy, which will govern application restrictions across the user base. And then we break out into our work styles, which can be filtered to certain users within the organization like we showed previously. The messaging functionality is very much like for like with privilege management for Windows, providing a consistent experience for end users, regardless of operating system endpoint and login is John. John has the high flexibility work style assigned to him. As we saw in the Windows solution, users often need to make updates to basic operating system functionalities within system preferences. For example, the user might want to change their energy saver settings or make changes to their time machine options. The user has no problem completing either of those tasks. If the user wants to install a new package, instead of being prompted with the dialog box asking for admin credentials that they don't have, Privilege Management is able to intercept those in the same way that it intercepts user account control prompts on Windows. In this case, the user gets a simple yes-no dialog box, and after they choose yes, that will go ahead and run. We're able to block applications in the same way as we saw in the Windows environment, and we're also able to challenge users if they're trying to execute some kind of high-risk behavior. For example, if our user is looking to change his group membership from a standard user to an admin, that's something we would classify as high risk, and the user is met with a dialog box asking him to provide a reason and submit the request, which will then be added to a new ServiceNow ticket through our ServiceNow integration, which is also available for Mac OS. We're also able to switch the user to a different work style, as we did in the Windows environment. 
So if you wanted to change this user from the high flexibility work style to the low flexibility work style, you can do that very easily. We can even approve things like sudo commands. If you wanted users not to be part of the sudoers file in the same least privileged way as we removed them from the admins group, privilege management can approve individual sudo commands. In this instance, we can give the user the ability to edit the host file. An inline privilege management message appears, the user reauthenticates as a standard user, and they're ready to go and edit the host file as a standard user. And we're able to monitor and track all of these actions through the analytics section in the web policy editor. In summary, Beyond Trust Privilege Management for Windows and Mac is going to help you secure your environment by achieving least privilege. It's also going to help you demonstrate compliance with all the major mandates. And because secure PCs are cheaper to maintain and end users are more enabled, privilege management will help you reduce service desk costs. You'll be able to achieve true least privilege and drastically reduce internal vulnerabilities by removing admin rights within your organization. And you're going to protect your business from a host of external threats by implementing security measures that actually improve the product. We can offer multiple different options for deployment. Privilege management can be managed via cloud platform, via private cloud solutions, or on-prem solutions. However you want to manage it, we offer a solution for you. Thank you.